so uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We have uh, enormous pleasure to uh, welcome Dr. Manisha Wanasinga Pascal from University of Colombo uh, for the uh, alumnus of University of Colombo, John Crock University Institute, University of Notre Dame, School of Conflict Analysis and Resolution, George Mason University. Uh, the research focus of uh, Dr. Manisha uh, is uh, conflict analysis and human security, uh, but also many, many, many other topics from the international relations. Certainly, Dr. Manisha uh, published uh, a lot of uh, research uh, books and articles. Uh, she also been teaching for over 20 years uh, at the university uh, level, introducing uh, over 12 new course uh, modules to undergraduate and postgraduate programs at the University of uh, Colombo. Uh, and uh, last but not least, also uh, Dr. Wanasinke Pascal has written and obtained grants for her department, uh, grant for, for example, grant from the World Bank, uh, and been instrumental uh, for MOUs uh, the, the, uh, as as a, one of the, the, the driving forces for the, the cooperation uh, between uh, universities uh, around the world, including University of Warsaw. So also thank you for for that, uh, Dr. Manisha. Uh, we you you were you were very you you are always very very helpful and and thanks to you we also had a very good opening of the direct uh, flights uh, from Warsaw to Colombo uh, yes. with with your with your help there was a really a big big event in in Colombo so also just uh, uh, thank you thank you for that and now. I would like to to uh, ask you to take take the floor to present the lecture geopolitical landscape in the Indian Ocean Sri Lankan perspective. The screen is yours, Doctor. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, this is going to I'm going to introduce kind of broad themes of geopolitical. Uh, kind of ideas of what it is, and then go to the Indian Ocean and explain, especially uh, in terms of how significant the Indian Ocean is, and then go to the Sri Lankan perspective. Uh, because of that, uh, I'm going to stop the video because it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. So here you are. All right. So lecture outline, introduction to not really geopolitics per se. I'm just going to rush through that because I, I might most likely I'm uh, preaching to the choir here. Um, I'm going to talk about the Indian Ocean. I'm going to talk about the role of Sri Lanka in the Indian Ocean, the perspective of the of um, kind of Sri Lanka um, and the Sri Lankan from the perspective of an island nation, a uh, perspective of a island nation which is uh, very which has a very large EE zone which is in a very prominent position but also an island which is next door to a very powerful country and influenced by even more power or equally or even more powerful countries so the perspective um, if you think about it is in one sense a small island perspective the Geography and politics or geopolitics talks about the spatial organization of, uh, well, geography itself talks about spatial organization of human activity. But if you think about it, um, international relations is about uh, politics of the geographical position of uh, countries. And if you also consider that, it is. Um, it, it, it does provoke such an idea of wars and colonial powers and and um, kind of the, the strategizing about how you're going to carve out the world in terms of influence uh, that 
geopolitics is seems in some ways very prevalent and very important but the geopolitics that we always adhere to are uh, the ideas of mahan matinda you know spikeman i will you know just introduce them but i would think that geopolitics that from the perspective of sri lanka we we would talk about includes all these different views of what is geopolitics which are not something over a uh, hundred years so statesmanship of course geopolitics or uh, the practice of states uh in terms of controlling uh and competing for that particular territory uh sri lanka has been influenced and we're going to talk about these four categories later um uh in terms of the sri lankan perspective um uh, geopolitical politics um where the the idea of uh seeable and knowable ideas these are the theoretical foundations of the western countries geopolitics of situated knowledge and absolutely uh critical geopolitics um where well, what it means to be uh, influenced by other powers um within within a broader realm as i said um geopolitics especially the classical geopolitics um which we even in sri lanka we still adhere to or if you look at anything to do with geopolitics any dissertation any any analysis we mostly go back to mahan we go back to mackinder we go back to spikeman all these individuals but we have to realize that these these geopolitical ideas were based on a 100 year old ideas of a time when it was an imperialistic world um where it was um a different world a 50 70 100 years ago it is a different world but we are influenced by and we are in terms of sri lanka we were very much influenced by this sri lanka was colonized so just to give a small brief outline by the the maritime regions of uh, ceylon or sri lanka were colonized by uh, the portuguese dutch and the british so for about 500 odd years we were colonized uh the entire island was colonized in 1815 by the british and they used sri lankan ports especially the um one in the north eastern area trincomalee as a base a naval base to control any issues in and around india so sri lanka was always considered significant especially for the british because of its geopolitical position more than its significance uh for economic significance it's um you know what it can bring to the empire what it brought to the empire for majority of the colonizers was its strategic position so geopolitics of cold war also influenced the region of of course uh, south asia and the indian ocean region uh throughout the 45 years 1945 to 1990 and even in the new Pol- new world order that came out to 1991 1991 you have a, a focus on either but well, not exactly south asia per se except maybe when you talk about terrorism but not just south asia per se but southeast asia asia pacific region or the indian ocean region but let's look at the indian ocean indian ocean is a vast area there is africa the middle east 
countries which adjoin the Indian Ocean. You also have South Asian countries that adjoin Indian Ocean, and of course, East Asia and the Pacific uh, areas that join the Indian Ocean or uh, are joined by the Indian Ocean. The Indian Ocean is while in one sense quite distant from the so-called powerful nations uh, in terms of the in the West. But it is a, a region where extra regional powers, regional powers, uh, near neighbors, far neighbors have been focused on. It is a region which saw the true influence and ex, uh, of the BRI, the the Chinese Chinese uh, road and belt, or the maritime Silk Route, the the Silk Road economic belt, the economic corridor, the so all these terms, in respect of that, uh, whatever terms you use, BRI, OVOR, this also highlights how significant the region of South Asia and region of the Indian Ocean is to extra-regional powers. And especially when it comes to one of our uh, the newest harbor, Hambantota, which is very controversial right now, um, and I will explain why it's controversial. We can talk about it as well, but the Hambantota harbor has the potential to become one of the top uh, harbors in the world, mainly because of the fact that world traffic, sea routes, uh, shift past it. Sometimes call the reverse uh, string of pearls, the quad also is, you know, targeting the Indian Ocean as well as the Pacific. But the Indian Ocean area is crucial for security reasons, for economic reasons, for communication. And Sri Lanka has played a major role. Its geopolitical positioning has resulted in Sri Lanka being considered one of the, the key nodes in the Indian Ocean. Um, Ptolemy's map of the of different regions has Taprobane or Sri Lanka uh, as in a in a very very prominent place in the Indian Ocean. Sri Lanka has continued to play a major role. If you look at the maritime traffic flow, if you look at the sea lines of communication, in every place you can see how the central spot is taken by Sri Lanka. However, Sri Lanka itself is a small island. We consider ourselves a small island, not physically small, uh, but we are, you can say, we are compared to our nearest neighbor, a uh, very powerful nearest neighbor, quite, some, we can say, quite small. Sri Lanka gained independence in 1948, 4th of February. India gained independence a year before, 15th of August. Uh, when Sri Lanka gained independence, we were even then in the international media as well as within Sri Lanka. Um, kind of our independence day, its, its relevance was kind of pushed below to the assassination of Gandhi on the 30th of uh, 
January and his uh, funeral on the 2nd of uh, February. So while we were talking about the importance of uh, the independence of Sri Lanka on the 4th of February, Sri Lanka was also, if you look at any of Sri Lanka newspapers or the global newspapers, you see that Sri Lanka's independence was kind of pushed to a side, even in Sri Lanka. And uh, it does talk about independence, but it also talks about the importance and significance of the assassination of um, Mahatma Gandhi. We are an island that is, while India has uh, several neighbors, we as an island actually have a sea borders with uh, India. Our placement is such that for centuries, for thousands of years, uh, uh, we have a history, a written history dating back to about 2,500 years and um, archaeological information dating back to another 5,000. Uh, so we, it is an ancient history and Sri India and Sri Lanka uh, have been tied through uh, ancient narratives of Mahabharata, Ramayana, uh, ancient invasions, uh, the cultural influence of Buddhism and Hinduism, the Sanskrit base and Dravidian based language connections. So, in terms of Sri Lanka's geopolitical position, India has always been a very powerful and very influential country. So when Sri Lanka gained independence, one of the key things Sri Lanka wanted to happen was a way of maintaining the independence, sovereignty of Sri Lanka vis-a-vis -vis India. Indian influence is and was prominent. Um, Gandhi's ashes were brought to Sri Lanka. Part of the ashes of Gandhi was brought to Sri Lanka on 17th of February 1948, Nehru and Gandhi considered in Sri Lanka very important. Sri Lanka has had and ha continued to have maritime concerns, uh, especially regarding the Kachitiwa Island uh, and the maritime border. We have had problems uh, pertaining to uh, Indian fishing Boat. There is border issues, but also uh, fisher fishing trawlers and all these other issues that arise with having a large, powerful country next to Sri Lanka. And this is more relevant if you think in terms of how, um, in 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 terms of Sri Lanka's own ethno religious, oh sorry, ethno linguistic conflict or a civil war or a separatist war. Sri Lanka's geopolitical position vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Indian Ocean and especially when it comes to India has impacted Sri Lanka. Jaffna, Vaunia, these areas were at one time controlled by the liberation tigers of Tamil Ila. And the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Iram had close ties with the southern parts, the Tamil Nadu uh, areas, because the northern region had uh, Tamil people uh, and there was a very close kin relations. And Tamil Nadu in, uh, in turn had uh, a strong influence in the, on the central government and the governing of India. That is why if you check on uh, books by Sw uh, Swami and a lot of others, um, India wanted and assisted the training of uh, what they call the boys, um, the Tello plot, LTTE, in the early 1980s. Uh, when the 83 riots emerged, uh, happened, the, there were lots of refugees. Uh, the Indian influence was also felt in terms of 
the 1987 peace agreement and the Indian peacekeeping force that came to Sri Lanka. They stayed predominantly in the northern regions of Sri Lanka. And uh, after a while, it waged a battle, ba battles against the separatists, uh, especially the LTTE. The country um, has had a great deal of influence placed on it in terms of how much um, true freedom the country has in terms of its foreign policy, in terms of its uh, policy, domestic policy with, with regard to its Tamil population, its Muslim population. So its placement very close to India, but separated from India, has, in a larger sense, influenced the trajectory of Sri Lanka, independent Sri Lanka. We've had, um, especially in 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 terms of the the war, uh, which came in from 1983 to 2009. Uh, in terms of the subsequent uh, international problems that Sri Lanka faced with human rights, uh, our debt crisis, the presence of China, all this uh, we had to deal with with India as our nearest neighbor. Currently, and we can discuss this even further uh, in our in your Q and A session. Currently, Sri Lanka, uh, because of the debt crisis, because of the human rights concerns, has become, at least on surface, if we not, um, at least according to analysts and analysts, uh, become more and more dependent on India's position in uh, and India's assistance. However, Sri Lanka is not just about the, we have, it's not just about being dependent on it. Our strategic position has made it so, sorry, um, has made it such that we have been and we continue to be a presence uh, and we have and we have continued to use our geopolitical strategic position to balance our foreign policy. We always say Sri Lanka's foreign policy, we are friends of all and enemies of none. And our foreign policy, especially during the Cold War, looked at uh, the, a, a non-aligned foreign policy. We yeah, Initially, we had to face uh, Cold War politics, us versus them attitudes, um, whereby we we faced a lot of hardships. But but with the non-alignment, with the assistance of both the USSR and the USA, uh, with the European countries assisting, Sri Lanka has built a foreign policy that strives to balance its relations with the near neighbor of India, with the with Pakistan at some times, with China on the other hand, with uh, with uh, Euro some of the European countries on one side, uh, with with um, uh, Middle Eastern countries. So we have uh, strived to balance. The, the the situation where we are faced with a very powerful India and a regional power of India, uh, but being slightly removed from the subcontinent of um, has also allowed Sri Lanka to develop differently. Uh, social culturally, uh, religious wise, 
uh, in terms of our attitude towards women, our attitudes towards education. Um, so, Dara, while we are we were part of the British Empire, we were uh, from a and from eighteen o two onwards, we were uh, administered separately from India. While we were part of the British Raj, uh, before India gained uh, universal franchise, Sri Lanka gained universal franchise. Um, we have uh, the, uh, the, the attitudes, for example, uh, towards the lit literacy rates, maternal mortality, the human development side of uh, the the human development side of our country's development, the wealth of the country. Uh, we consider the fact that we are physically separate from India, physically separate from that that reach that the continent itself. Uh, that is one of the reasons that has influenced the country to develop this way. So we have a literacy rate of 90, uh, life expectancy of 70s. Um, our human development index has been very good, uh, except for the last two years when we have a slight drop in terms of child mortality and malnutrition because of the economic crisis. Um, the uh, you know, women have been uh, considered equal. So a lot of things that are happening, a lot of the Sri Lankans themselves perceive the geopolitical position of the country as being influencing, as, as an influencer of the social, cultural, attitudinal worldview of the country. Um, geopolitical position has, of course, influenced, as I said at the start, the 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 composition, religious, uh, ethnic, linguistic composition of the people. Uh, Seventy plus percent of the population are uh, Sinhalese. We have Tamil people. We have Muslim people. We have Dutch. And a European and uh, native mix the burger population. Uh, we have uh, the the native population, the Vedas. Uh, we have had um, Sinhala, Tamil, English as a link language, uh, but Sinhala and Tamil are national languages. We have had female prime ministers was first female prime minister was from Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka has had a great deal of influence because of the fact that we are separate from. But if you think about it, Sri Lanka has also um, been a kind of side for a while. Uh, the powerful nations of the 20th century, the British at the pre 1940s, the Americans and the Russian Soviet Union uh, post 1945, uh, they were focused on India, they were focused on Indo Pacific. Not so much on this little island called Sri Lanka, despite it being uh, very, very, um, uh, despite it having a very uh, in an important place. Sri Lanka has uh, and has the potential for being a key part of the part of. Uh, trade. However, its internal problems, as well as uh, the fact that Singapore and other countries have uh, exceptionally good uh, 
I would say exceptionally good. Uh, harbors has impacted Sri Lanka. I mean, we are not a developed country. We are a developing country. Uh, we have had several economic crises. We've had several uh, problems in that sense. But if you think in terms of the geopolitics, how we have used state, uh, statesmanship uh, to retain and to ensure our uh, independence, that is, I, I'm, I'm coming back to this idea of this geopolitics. Um, we have not competed for territory as such, but we have strived to retain and then build on um, our place. We we were we um, we were instrumental in introducing a resolution for Indian Ocean as a zone of peace. Um, Sri Lanka has played a key role in uh, in attempting to ensure the the peace or at least uh, relative peace of the region. Sri Lanka has played a key role in the non-aligned movement in SARC. And because of its geo geopolitical and geographical position, it has continued to play a role as a venue for Indian, Pakistan, Bangladesh interactions. This is in terms of the region. So while we are a small country, we have, as I said, balanced, I uh, use balancing, used statements, statesmanship in terms uh, to ensure that we keep our ge geopolitical position and wherever necessary, wherever possible, expand the influence that we have. In some sense, especially when BRI or OBOR, as it was initially called, the Belt and Road Initiative came along, there was a lot of discussion on whether Sri Lanka is being another port in the Mahan's idea of sea power. Uh, in some sense, Sri Lanka took on and was very happy with China's um, assistance. You see, after, after 2009, Sri Lanka desperately wanted, Sri Lankan leadership desperately wanted to develop its infrastructure. And majority of the infrastructure um, kind of projects were which are which were developed by Chinese came and 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 actually was given to um, or suggested as an as options for India to join in and assist. So they were initially given um, projects, uh, but uh, they were unable to assist Sri Lanka again due to how the war was terminated due to the human rights issue, due to Tamil Nadu. Uh, so China came along. And you have Sri Lanka striving to balance out the fact that China was involved in certain infrastructure projects and India was um, also later on become became involved in infrastructure projects, especially in the northern areas. Um, it is its position in uh, holding on to oil tankers, oil, 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 um, oil storage tankers in Trincomalee Harbour. All these were kind of balancing acts uh, 
while taking on the role uh, of possibly a, a port under kind of the, a, under uh, China's expansion for um, or China's expansion uh, as a sea power. So you can so so in some sense, and I said at the very start, China place in Sri Lanka, uh, especially because we are in debt, uh, we are facing extraordinary debt crisis, and most of our debt is to China. Um, then you have a situation where Chinese influence on Sri Lankan politics, Chinese influence on Sri Lankan even whether um, domestic or foreign policy is a security concern not just for Sri Lanka but for India and for countries such as Australia, such as America. So in terms of Australia, let's let's take the fact that there has been a great deal of uh, of illegal or irregular migration uh, going from Sri Lanka to uh, Australia and in the early 2000s, Sri Lankan Navy and Australia kind of joint effort to uh, reduce this. But from say, 1976, when uh, Australia introduced the White Paper, you know about its its defense uh, projections and its 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 um, strategy, uh, it is only in the 21st century and especially after 9-11, uh, that Sri Lanka became part of its kind of sphere of focus. Um, and Sri Lanka is, is part of it because of, at least from a Sri Lankan military, naval, strategic per perception, this is from a Sri Lanka lens. It is because if, especially right now with Sri Lanka being in a very precarious position uh, with China and India, if the courts, uh, if the physical presence, if the influence of these very powerful countries of China and India, um, if the influence is very strong, then a large portion of the Indian Ocean, right? If you think about the EE zone, large portion of the south part, south part of Sri Lanka, it might not be accessible to countries such as Australia. Sri Lanka is a small island, but its EE zone is huge. Right, Sri Lanka is sixty-five thousand square kilometers, but five hundred plus thousand uh, kind of square kilometers of sea. Imagine if India, which has a huge uh, E zone, uh, is then influencing enough of to the extent that it it can also patrol Sri Lankan E zone then a lot of uh, other countries will not be able to access. And also because of the Hambantota port. Hambantota port. How it impacts Sri Lanka's E zone and the presence of China there. That is also going to be very detrimental to countries such as Australia, countries uh, which zigzag um, and uh, influ uh, move, move past or use the sea lanes 
of communication, ceilings of transportation. Sri Lanka is in a strategic position and uh, the Sri Lankan um, lens is, especially when it comes to geostrategy, is that Sri Lanka should remain as, as much as possible independent, uh, sovereign, uh, and only way to do that is to balance its foreign policy, um, gain assistance from countries like Japan, from EU to America, to Australia, to China, to India, to Pakistan, as many countries as possible. Sri Lankan kind of projections um, also uh, in terms of another geopolitical aspect is that being an island nation, we are also very concerned about uh, the environmental impact of the place, the the economic impact on, on trade, the political impact on ensuring sovereignty, and the social impact. Sri Lanka is considered a hub, a very sad situation, um, of, for drugs. It is a hub for irregular migration. It is apparently uh, quite uh, of, well, can't say focus as such. It was sadly a focus of terrorism. It has been a focus of terrorism for decades, but for it was a focus of ISIS um, so its position has also been detrimental to Sri Lanka. In terms of its, its, um, its views on, on, or I wouldn't say views, but its, its, um, its current discourse especially regarding uh, its geopolitical kind of what is its role under the BRI, what is its role as part of a debt trap, what is its role in the American, Australian, uh, EU, um, French, in, uh, British, Turkish, uh, Pakistani, Indian, all of these countries' security strategic outlook uh, with regard to Indo the Indo-Pacific. That has resulted in uh, a large number of state visits, um, situations where the military uh, joint trainings, a lot of things have changed in the 21st century and, and it is, especially in the 2020s, you can see the the especially when it comes to uh, and this is quite interesting about how COVID and and health health diplomacy worked in Sri Lanka. We were able to get the vaccinations from so many countries. Of course, we had to pay, and there's a lot of corruption there as well. But um, we had the British, you know, whatever 
in vaccination types you hear of, we obtained them. And they were given to Sri Lanka sometimes before they were given to other countries. Uh, China provided, USSR, US, sorry, US, uh, sorry, Russia provided. A lot of countries provided. That also highlights now, the significance of the country, even though it's a small island, it is of great importance to the globe. It has uh, played a major role, but it is playing a, a major role. So what, what I hope that we can discuss further, because kind of putting in so much in this one now or this 50 minutes is how uh, in terms of how Sri Lanka perceives its position to India, how Sri Lanka uh, considers its position with China, uh, with other regional powers or its regional powers. Um, so I'm, I'm more than happy to talk about these uh, things uh, when we have our discussions. And if you think about it, okay, uh, let me kind of give a summary of uh, kind of the... Now, Sri Lanka is in some sense a lateral... Uh, lit sorry, a literal country. Um, in the Indian Ocean, uh, it is it is uh, uh, a nation that is uh, is a nation that is uh, it is it's a nation that is next to uh, a naval power, India. Um, India itself has seven thousand five hundred kilometers of coastline. It has um, like, like 200 plus ports. Um, and India itself considers the Indian Ocean, whether it's Indian Ocean from the Eastern African, African coast to the Andaman Sea uh, as areas under its purview, its priority. So it considers itself, the, the uh, Sri Lanka, as part of, under its purview. Now, in, in, so, so it is something that, that is quite intriguing. Uh, because China, India considers China as an, uh, kind of a, country that should not play such a role, especially in uh, in Sri Lanka, especially in, in, in the in the Indian Ocean. But um, India, ha uh, sorry, um, uh, China is, I mean, Indian Ocean for China is extraordinarily important. 80% of Chinese uh, crude oil passes through the Indian Ocean. It is, um, it is, uh, so this area has to be secured for, uh, for China's entire development. Uh, Indian Ocean, major, so many of the Indian Ocean countries um, are partnered with China for trade. Um, there is um, a lot of Indian Ocean countries which um, China has uh, provided investments. Uh, six, uh, I mean, South Asian countries, if you look at South Asian countries alone, some of I mean, them part of the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, there is strong ties uh, with. Bangladesh, Maldives, Sri Lanka, uh, military, economic, diplomatic ties, special diplomatic ties. Um, 
there is also the fact that China has uh, a lot of diplomatic missions in the region. Um, there have been sub presence of submarines, research uh, research ships uh, in the ocean in the in uh, that have come to Sri Lanka, and uh, India has been has had objections with uh, the presence. Um, then, um, then in in terms of um, in terms of say countries like USA, um, they are extra regional power, absolutely. But their 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 presence in Indian Ocean is obvious. Um, it is. Uh, it is. Of course, strangely, it is. Um, if you look at USA um, kind of strategy, it doesn't say Indian Ocean strategy. It says Indo-Pacific strategy. Uh, so it is. That is the terminology which is interesting. Uh, the 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 fifth fleet is uh, nearby. Um, the the military presence. Uh, is ever present. Um, it has close ties with India, especially after the Cold War. Uh, military cooperation um, has increased in the 2020s, and uh, there have been joint military exercises uh, with within in in the Indian Ocean. So you have situations where the the Indian Ocean is crucial, and um, and in for a country that is <coughs> present, not extra regional, but is is straddling in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Australia is, I would say, a key key player, especially for Sri Lanka. It is it is a, a country that has not always been close to Sri Lanka, as I said, um, they have built uh, stronger ties um, with Sri Lanka, especially with regard to the, the, the issues of irregular migration, uh, among other things. So Sri Lanka has been a uh, You know, if you think critically, Sri Lanka has been in an enviable position. However, Sri Lanka, from Sri Lankan perspective, has at times been unable to uh, enhance it or utilize it or exploit it as it needed to. It has been hemmed in by regional, extra regional powers, but it has also managed to retain its, its power to balance, sometimes through its balancing between countries, but sometimes through balancing uh, with regional organizations or extra regional organizations. Um, Iora, Instead, uh, not so much so. I, I think I have prattled along quite a bit. So let me stop for now and give the floor to uh, questions. Is that, is that good? I hope it is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Misha. Thank you very much, Professor. So uh, that's a very, very interesting introduction to the, to the geopolitics in the Indian Ocean region. Uh, it's very rare. I mean, usually in the European Union, we're discussing Indo-Pacific, and it's a very, very, very broad term and, and very, uh, not actually not understood uh, properly by, by majority of the audience uh, here in, in Europe. 
uh, as you know. So uh, now I just uh, would like to invite uh, our students to ask the, the questions, please. Now the floor is yours. You can ask directly or if you are afraid, you can you can write the chat, use the chat, yes. please. While they are doing this. Ladies, about... yes, yes, sorry. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, if uh, if you look uh, if you look what what uh, we discuss this uh, ISIS thing and uh, what what goes on, I mean the the western part of the Indian Ocean, but 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 uh, there is always a slight possibility that this this kind of uh, phenomena. I'm speaking about. About uh, about the attacks on uh, on on the merchant fleet in, in the Red Sea, and and uh, it's not only the the matter of the, the 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 Horn of Africa and the piracy, because the this actually well organized uh, would say the the state state terrorism. Uh, and and attacking attacking the 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 ships uh, of of the United States of the United Kingdom and not, not only uh, and and the question is uh, so uh, how you look from your perspective uh, what what kind what kind of steps uh, should be taken just to 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 prevent it. Uh, in what way European Union should be should be engaged not only in the western part but let's say all 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 the way uh, from from Europe I mean through the the Indian Ocean across the Indian Ocean what what's your perspective? Well, if you look at um, how when when piracy has occurred and lots uh, Sri Lankan ships was also were also captured. Seychelles, Sri Lanka and India collaborated um, to rescue the, the, the hijacked ships and um, and it is not just the ships that uh, take crude oil or major trade uh, vessels but also fishing vessels were also are, are impacted by the piracy that's happening. And I think um, uh, EU and other countries have to, uh, to kind of utilize the abilities uh, of countries in the Indian Ocean uh, to assist. Right now, it is countries which are closer to the Red Sea, but there are possibilities of the the virus expanding further into the Indian Ocean. Uh, you can you saw the amount of traffic there is in the Indian Ocean, and there's also the 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 fact that our navies, the countries that that have navies in the Indian Ocean uh, region, our countries, especially Sri Lanka. Has an extraordinarily good navy uh, with uh, with with a lot of experience. Uh, we had sea tigers uh, for a time being. Uh, we've had irregular mig uh, kind of migration, so there was also irregular and illegal um, transportation of drugs. So we have had experiences where uh, the navy itself is experienced. So utilize the, that Navy, utilize the skills that are available, and of course, exchange information. I think that is very, very crucial. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it's a white shipping, uh, white shipping agreement, so-called, yeah. yes, uh, right. Uh, now is a question from the audience. What about the situation now in diplomatic relations, Sri Lanka and Belarus? I mean, the professor is not a diplomatic representative of Sri Lanka. <laughs> professor is from the university, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but what what is what is the Sri Lankan perspective on Belarus and Ukraine? 
uh, uh, and the Ukrainian war in Ukraine. How 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 this how Shil how the, the if you if you could tell us what how the government of Sri Lanka. It's what is the the, the feedback uh, because it's a bit far from you for you, but uh, if, well, if you, according yeah. to what what are the what are the official let's say statements uh, by by the by the government in Colombo? Uh, we've had a consulate in in uh, uh, so uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think in the 21st century, like 2000 or so. I mean, for okay. sure, your embassy is in Warsaw, I know, because I I, I yeah I, I met uh, ambassadors for, for the last for the yes. few years. But but what about what about well, what about um, Minsk and Belarus? Who is accredited yeah, I, to I, Belarus? Yeah, I don't know. We have had uh, an honorary consul uh, at Minsk. And um, so uh, that that is uh, I I do not have uh, a lot of information uh, regarding uh, that anything further. Um, but we do I do know that uh, a lot of our Sri Lankan students were in uh, go there for go go to Eastern Europe for educational purposes. And especially during the COVID period, we we had uh, a lot of our students had to be brought back from uh, Eastern European countries, Central European also, but Eastern European countries. And of course, from China that highlighted the fact that we have so many students in these countries, mainly doing postgraduate studies so that was something that we realized in terms of the numbers mm -hmm. uh, but i don't have a lot of mm -hmm. uh, relation uh, kind of information regarding uh, that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right right i mean I, I i guess you also you you used to have a lot of students in in ukraine because yeah, uh, yeah because we it was uh, our country which was the center of evacuation for all the students from the foreign yes. students from Ukraine, yeah. Mm. And we had uh, a lot of uh, problems with even the Israel-Palestine situation. Oh. Uh, in that, in that uh, time, uh, when it started, there were, uh, you know, my, migrant workers in that those countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is another, yeah. I mean, did you evacuate them? I mean, from, from Gaza Strip? Did you? Uh, did you evacuate those workers yeah. from Gaza Strip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we did. Uh, but uh, some might still be there in, in Israel. Yeah, here is another, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, right. It's a matter matter of of yeah. I mean the 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 recognizing on on not recognizing the the government. Uh, it's another 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 issue. I don't know, for example, if Sri Lanka recognizes uh, Taliban's as a as a government of no. of Afghanistan. No, we don't. We don't. Yeah. And that okay. has that has really impacted uh, Sri Lanka's or, or actually Sa. Uh, so because Sri Lanka and India and you know we don't recognize Taliban. Taliban as, as a government. Yes, mm -hmm. and you need all eight countries for SAC to uh, <laughs> function, and so we can't even remove Afghanistan from SAC because you need Afghanistan representation for that. To yeah, work. also fashion. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, I know, I know that, but the, let's say. Informal contacts, also uh, let's say business contacts, are through through Qatar. Uh, majority of countries are are, are are communicating because it's a matter it's a matter of of humanitarian assistance usually mm -hmm. uh, being extended to to the to uh, the population of of Afghanistan. Right. Okay. So uh, the. Um, 
uh, and if you if you can can tell us so uh, the 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 relations with the European Union countries, uh, you have uh, this GSP plus uh, yes. status, uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, there is a there is a delegation of the European Union in Colombo, and very active I, I know, uh, but it covers also Maldives. You have yes. another, let's say, yes. uh, neighbor, which is uh, for the Europeans is a place for the nice uh, holidays. Uh, but for you, it's uh, uh, sometimes it looks like a nightmare in terms of geopolitics as well. Yeah, uh, and we are, we are. If you think in terms of, I mean, Maldives is a fantastic. Uh, series of islands and it is a, a series of islands that uh, people are concerned that might disappear into the into the oceans if if this uh, if the sea level rises it is uh, because of the position of Maldives uh, and it's uh, I forgot to tell one more thing actually because of our social, cultural, whatever position, when there's religious persecution or even sexual persecution, persecution because of sexual orientation in the predominantly Muslim countries uh, in South Asia, they do come to Sri Lanka. And while Sri Lanka does have archaic British <laughs> laws regarding um, homosexuality and all mm -hmm. that, um, that is often, I mean, it is, I, I've never heard of it being implemented. So we have refugees in, uh, in Sri Lanka hiding from persecution for their sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had uh, fears that we will get Rohingyans. Uh, we have not signed the, the refugee convention, but uh, we have taken in. No, we haven't. Uh, oh, yeah, but, but thank you. Thank you. It's a very interesting point about the refugees. I mean, the the gender for gender studies and uh, yes. the and the uh, and the, the the human security. It's it's a yeah. very important. I mean, the Maldives has a, in by, by constitution, it's a Muslim country. Yeah. And if it's if you are not Muslim, you cannot be a citizen of Maldives. And probably you are you you take care of those who can who are not uh, Muslims and they, they refuse of citizenship, so they are accepting or are or are asking you for, for Sri Lankan citizenship as as, yes. As, yes. as I as far as I understand. It's a very, very interesting moment. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's eye, eye opener for me because I, I I I never I never I never was thinking about about this also the, the particular uh, dimension of your relations with your neighbors uh, and 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 uh, uh, for uh, for you it's also the the, the matter uh, of uh, let's say the, the, to some extent taking taking care of of those people but. Did did also did uh, you 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 raise the, the question of uh, climate change? Uh, mm -hmm. So did did uh, Maldivians they they discuss with you the opportunity to move uh, into your territory in case of emergency? No, not really. Uh, but they do have. Um, I mean, they they do live in Sri Lanka. Uh, the Maldives, if they want. Uh, medical treatment, they come to Sri Lanka. Uh, Maldivian okay. leaders have come and studied in Sri Lanka. Okay. So so this is a base anyway, but uh, no. <laughs> okay, but They're still still you are, a, you are a kind of a hub for them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hub, yeah. I mean, educational hub, financial hub, uh, medical hub. Yeah, uh, and, and yeah, because it's uh, the, the, the population of, of Maldives is... 300,000 people, so it's not a, no, it, it does not go with millions. It's we a matter of, of just of having them somewhere in the south or in the, in the, in the east of Sri Lanka. 
if in case of emergency yeah it's uh, very uh, okay uh, any questions I, later? yes yes i i actually just checked something out for you um we've had uh, in in 2023 567 refugees and 224 asylum seekers. A uh, majority of them came from Pakistan. Pakistan? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. More interesting. But it's a f f more than 500 people. For, for, for you, it's a substantial number. Yes. And, and for a country that has not... <laughs> you we, know, we, I remember, I remember, you know, uh, ten years ago, there was a there was a the, the public debate in Poland about uh, you know uh, receiving uh, two thousand five hundred refugees, and uh, some political parties they were strongly against. And I mean, in terms of proportions, so it's uh, it's that the more than five hundred refugees for you is even bigger yeah. number than than those two thousand five hundred for us. And and certainly you you accept you yes I mean you accepted those those refugees from Pakistan yes you uh, yes we have uh, uh, you have the refugee camps or you are just the, the they accommodated them in the the, the, the in the um, smaller cities I think um, some are um, some are brought in for it it depends on whether what the reasons some are give, taken to safe houses some are given uh some are given settlements in mm -hmm. certain places some have relatives uh so it, it depends i see okay so uh, uh i see that there are no questions from the students i don't know why because it's a re really a unique opportunity to to have a, uh, such interesting guests uh, not from europe but uh, from from yeah. indian ocean you can learn a lot uh, for example that maldives for you is a happy holidays and for for the neighbors is a pure head headache also because of the number of coup d'etats they are the leaders in the Indian Ocean uh, and, and and not only coup d'etats uh, so so uh, also the, the the number of the volunteers for for the for the Islamic State as far as I know also they are the the, 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 the leaders I mean the Maldives which which also the that say cause a uh, uh, kind of kind of trouble for, for you and the, and the the uh, really uh, you you have to think strategically or so geopolitically how to how to cope with such a such a problem uh, yeah. professor thank you very much uh, for 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 your uh, for your very interesting lighting lecture and also for answering our questions uh, you visited you visited Warsaw not uh, long time ago, and but we are looking forward to to have you once again uh, because I know that that also you had we you had also with very interesting uh, very interesting meetings and we are uh, we will have also as I said uh, in, important interesting events on Asia and the Pacific. Uh, next year in the in the spring uh, due to our presidency the european union so we will be most welcome to come and please keep in touch professor thank you very much once again thank, thank you. you so much for the invitation and i hope the students enjoyed it and at least gained some definitely information definitely 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 they they did uh, uh, but I, I i don't know maybe it's uh, the, the 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 guys kept silent uh, only uh, ah yeah wait 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 another ah, another question what do you think about the rising position of the BRICS would okay it, um, could it affect Sri Lanka or not um well uh here's the kind of if you think about this right um 
it's also whether we can be a, we can utilize bricks uh, for our own benefit. Um, so so if you think in terms of Brazil, Russia, and uh, India, and and uh, these countries, uh, kind of we we have already had relations with majority of these countries, but. Uh, not so sure whether um, uh, whether um, whether we will be as impacted by BRICS uh, now rather than in say in a, in a couple of years into the future. Um, so uh, if you, uh, so, let me let me let me take it this way. Um, so BRICS is extraordinarily important. Um, then, um, then a um, lot of our students end up in these countries, um, but uh, the we have at this time focused more on the uh, on Sri Lankan concerns. I mean, we started out with outreach programs with BRICS and BIMSTEC, uh, pre-COVID, uh, but uh, but at, as as of now, uh, it is not so. I mean, it's just we we are focusing so much on internal concerns uh, that we have not, as I, as I said earlier, uh, exploited our position. Uh, sometimes we call it untapped. We have not tapped into the the potential that we have, whether it's in terms of tourism or in terms of having multilateral relations uh, with the BRICS countries, whether it is um, it is uh, invest getting their investments. Uh, so so kind of. Uh, it is, I mean, it is a, such a power in the international sphere, but we have not tapped it adequately. And that is my answer from, from this. Um, in terms of Sri Lanka's uh, position, I saw the other question uh, that they have asked. Uh, in terms of Russia's uh, Russia uh, policy towards Russia, Sri Lanka is unable to uh, unable to unwilling to always I mean we can't we have to remain neutral here. Sri Lanka cannot uh, antagonize Russia, uh, antagonize China because of their position in uh, the United Nations, uh, especially <clears throat> the influence they have, whether you like it or not, uh, the veto position. Sri Lanka has had so many uh, human rights, human rights council problems. Sri Lanka. So uh, we have had, I mean, and and, and Russia is uh, an export partner. Uh, we export tea to Russia, uh, and that is one of our major exports. Um, that's that's kind of the Russia imports one of the, kind of the largest one of the largest amounts of tea from Sri Lanka. Uh, so that is a that is a earner for us. Uh, then Ukraine is a is a key uh, key uh, kind of entity for Sri Lanka as well. We export tea. We export a lot of uh, things to uh, to Ukraine. We've had a lot of inter relations, but we have strived to remain neutral in this war. Uh, we haven't we haven't been as neutral as uh, we needed to or we intended to when it comes to uh, uh, Israel Palestine, right? Uh, so, um, so 
we had diplomatic relations with uh, Israel for years, uh, for decades. Um, uh, but uh, majority of us have continued to call for neutrality uh, in the conflict. But um, it is difficult for Sri Lanka to remain neutral uh, with, with the position it has in the Middle East. Okay, um, Belt and Road Initiative is in fact in Sri Lanka. Okay, um, it is an opportunity for economic growth. The potential, uh, the potential of Hambanto, the potential of the the Colombo Harbour. Um, I mean, there are white elephants. There's at least one white elephant here, but majority of these constructions. Uh, are useful, have an uh, economic purpose. Um, again, we have not utilized them adequately and our economic downturn has derailed a lot of our, I mean, um, Sri Lanka since 2022 has gone through so much. Uh, a food crisis, uh, a fuel crisis, uh, a, a dollar crisis, a health crisis, corruption crisis, um, and of course a political crisis. And uh, we have in the process not utilized it. And we have complained about the fact that we are, it's a debt trap. But if you think of, if you look at it, uh, Belt and Road, initiative, how it was implemented, resulted more in corruption, increasing corruption. Uh, and again, um, so that we have brought on ourselves. So that that problem is considered, but the opportunities are there. Opportunities uh, and, and trying to entice more tourism. Uh, Sri Lanka was, I mean, having a Boom in tourism before 2019 economic uh, the 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 ISIS uh, bombing on Easter Sunday, Sri Lanka was going through great uh, advancements uh, before COVID came. So there are, the, these setbacks were external to the country. Uh, of course, ISIS uh, attacks some have. There have been uh, gaps in our security. There's a court case right now about that as well. The president, uh, former president, is uh, being asked questions about what, how, how he tried, how, how, what were the information about ISIS and how he was uh, protecting the people. So there is a court case about that. But see, Sri Lanka's economy was advancing it was booming uh in especially uh through its tourism its tea it's uh so we were doing a lot of things uh and then external things happened uh internal corruption was there as well uh, so there are lots of things that happened uh that put a lot of uh, setbacks but we are a resilient nation we are a resilient nation and we have our people uh, I think we can we have a people who look forward and that's both detrimental to our development but it's also quite useful and by the way we are getting a huge a huge uh, brain drain these days so that is also something that's happening because of the economic crisis uh, the political crisis, as well as the health and all that. Um, then, why do you think of the rise of the Soviets? If it did, policy towards Russia, yes. I think Belt I have and road, Belt and Road Initiative. Yeah, yeah that is the, uh, yes, yeah. So that is why uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, I mean, China's, China has, um, China has, I mean, Think in terms of the the what China has helped 
build. Okay, China has helped build um, in Sri Lanka. Uh, let me think of the kind of the list of things that they helped build. The port, Hambadura port, um, the industrial uh, industrial estate linked to that, uh, Colombo financial city port, Colombo port. Um, international airport, uh, coal power plant, um, expressway that is the roads from Colombo to Katnaika, from uh, uh, Colombo to Gaul, central expressways, railway expansion. Um, so there are, and of course, a number of hospitals, a uh, lot of other places. Um, these are strategically significant for the economic development for um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, but one of the uh, arguments or criticisms regarding the Belt and Road Initiative and how it will help develop the country is while it these do provide opportunities sometimes they might not provide enough employment for the population um, and um, while um, harbors Ambatuta harbor uh, they are there uh, it will take decades for it to be um, it to attract enough uh, to be worthwhile, and and of course the existence of Colombo Harbour and the Trincomalee Harbours and you know and the Gaul Harbour especially, um, they are very good harbours, and they have to further be developed. Um, so Belgian Road Initiative gave us the infrastructure. Um, the debt is preventing us from truly using those uh, for example we don't we don't own the hub the harbor the harbor 70 percent of it does not belong to sri lanka it's on a lease 99 year lease so if you think in that sense we are not getting the benefits of the harbor which whatever benefits we are getting is in 10 years or 15 years time but we won't be getting all the benefits of that to us. Uh, so those things are, uh, those are the concerns that we have. And of course, some are white elephants. The, you know, some buildings that were created, um, the investment is just uh, not worth it. And the, and as, uh, but at the same time, the potential for the ports uh, to develop further is as it's extraordinary. We have the potential, and the potential of Sri Lanka being a venue for other South Asian countries for conferences to you know cricket uh, games is there because India doesn't want Pakistanis to come. Pakistan doesn't want India to come, and Pakistan and Bangladesh have issues. So any country and all countries have ended up in Sri Lanka as, as a venue. So again, with the infrastructural developments that we've had, the, the potential for BRI infrastructural development to help Sri Lanka's economy is there. But we have to still get out of the debt crisis first. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. And this is the very end of our meeting today. Once again, thank you. Uh, thank you for, 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 for your excellent, excellent uh, also uh, explanation of, of the Belt and Road, which also is uh, one, one of the, the topics we discuss very often. Uh, thank you once again and uh, see you in person, hopefully uh, soon. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you so much for inviting and thank, thank you, students. Thank you. Lovely questions. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye bye.